vector spaces. First, let's talk about the definition of a vector space. So a vector space is a non-empty set of vectors um, and two operators, which are addition and scalar multiplication, such that the following axioms hold true for all vectors in V, which is the vector space, and for CD, which are scalars, uh, real numbers. Now, these should look familiar to you because these are the same properties we talked about. Keeping in mind that we are going to have to prove that some space is a vector space or that some set of vectors is a vector space, the important ones are number one, which is closure under addition. This is going to be the second thing that we check, closure under addition. Number four, which specifically just tells us that it's non-empty. So this says non-empty. And in order to do that, just like if you've ever studied group theory, the first step is to say that it's non-empty because it contains the identity. Well, this is the additive identity is zero. And so we have to show that this is contained in V. That's step one. So we're going to say that the zero vector is in V. That's step one. Closure under addition is two. And then closure under scalar multiplication is the third thing. Typically, we are not going to have to check all of the axioms showing that those three are satisfied uh, the rest of them most of the time are satisfied just by the general rules of addition or scalar multiplication let's take a look at an example together so we want to show that the set of all two by three matrices with the operations of matrix addi addition and scalar multiplication is a vector space so remember, there's 10 axioms. If you split distributive property into two, there are 10 things that we need to check. But the three that are most important is first, non-empty, and then closure under addition, and then closure under scalar multiplication. So let's start with one. Is the zero vector contained in V? Well, the zero vector for a two by three matrix would in fact be contained in V because it's a two by three matrix and we can use the zero matrix. So step one is satisfied. It's non-empty. So V is non-empty. Step two, we need to show that two two by three matrices would in fact result, the sum of them would result in another two by three matrix. That would show that it is closed. Now there's no other restriction except that it's going to be a two by three matrix. So yes, I can show this and I can fill this in with B1 through B6. And I know that the result would be A1 plus B1. A2 plus B2, A3 plus B3, A4 plus B4, and so on. Now, do I have to show all of this work? No, I can just say that if I take a two by three matrix and I add another two by three matrix, I'm going to get, yep, a two by three matrix. So yes, this would be in V, so closed under addition. And then what's the last one? Scalar multiplication. If I took um, C times this matrix, what do I get? Well, I get CA1, CA2, and so on. So yes, that's going to be in V, and so it's closed under scalar multiplication. So yes, we can show, and I got lazy there at the end just for the sake of length of this video, but we can show that this would in fact be a vector space because it meets all of the requirements. Let's take a look at a non-example. Show that V, uh, which contains all of the vectors, column vectors, x, y, such that x is greater than or equal to zero and y is less than or equal to zero is not a vector space. Now, when we're showing a non-example, typically you just have to find one that doesn't work. But let's go ahead and make sure that we check all three. First, do we have the zero vector? 
Well, because this is or equal to, yes, we do. We can say that one is satisfied because zero, zero would in fact be an element of V. And again, I'm, I'm not writing everything I would write if this were an actual question. I would write zero, zero is in V, therefore V is not empty. The second thing I would check is addition. If I have two values such that X is greater than or equal to zero, say three, four, and Y is less than or equal to zero, whoops, so negative two, and I'm adding something where this is, say, zero, negative five, is the result still going to be such that X is greater than or equal to zero and Y is less than or equal to zero? Now, is that a proof? No, that's not a proof. I'm just trying to show myself exactly what would happen. Let's think about where these values are. If X is greater than or equal to zero and Y is less than or equal to zero, we're talking about any vector in this space. Three, negative two would be this vector. And then zero, negative five would be this vector. So we're really talking about anything on the positive X axis, the, po the negative Y axis, or anything in quadrant four. If I take two vectors that are in quadrant four and add them together, am I always going to get a vector in quadrant four? Yes, I am. And therefore two is satisfied. Let's take a look at three. Three says I can take some scalar, any scalar, any real number and multiply it by U and end up in the vector space. Well, we're saying the vector space is anything here. So what if I took three negative two, but I multiplied it by negative two? Well, that gives me negative six, positive four. This not in V because negative six is not greater than or equal to zero and positive four is not less than or equal to zero. So this is not a vector space because it doesn't pass that third test. Here are two for you to practice on your own. I would like you to check all of the axioms, all three, not all 10, all three for each of them, even if you find one that doesn't work, just for good practice. So when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So for the first one, we're saying all of the X's are greater than zero and Y's are greater than zero. So geometrically, we would say we're dealing with this first quadrant. Um, notice that it's not or equal to here, and therefore right away I can see a problem that one is not going to be satisfied because zero, zero is not in V because it's not or equal to. So right away, one is not satisfied. Two, if I add two together that are both positive, say here's my first vector and my second vector is here, I add them together, parallelogram rule says, yep, you're gonna be okay there. So two is satisfied. What about three? If I were to multiply a vector by some scalar, this one is not going to be satisfied. Think about negative three times two, one, that gives me negative six, negative three. Those are both negative, therefore they don't satisfy uh, the condition for vectors in V. So we would only have one condition that is met. Let's look at the next example. I have that the product is less than or equal to zero. So the or equal to gives me a little bit of hope because we know they could both be zero. Um, so this would be a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive. So these are the areas of the graph that we're looking at. So for one, yes, this is satisfied because zero, zero is in fact in V because it's an or equal to zero, which means those both values could be zero. For two, we're saying, can I add two vectors together and end up still in the situation that X, Y is less than or equal to zero? So let's take a look. What if I took five, negative one, 
and I added negative 2, 2. So both 5, negative 1 and negative 2, 2 would have a product that's less than or equal to 0. If I add these together, I would get 3, 1, which are both positive. So this is not going to work. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1 is here. And negative 2, 2 is here. And parallelogram rule would be somewhere in here and therefore not going to work. So this one is not satisfied. And then for three, if I took two that are, um, let's try these, five negative one uh, multiplied by say three. Well, this one's gonna be satisfied because whether I multiply by a positive or a negative, I'm still going to end up with one positive value and one negative value. So one and three are met, but two is not. Let's take a look at the polynomial vector space. So P sub N is the set of all polynomials of the form. P of X is equal to A zero plus A one X plus A two X squared and so forth. Let's verify it's a vector space. Again, we would start with is P of X equals zero contained in P of N and yes it is so that is closure I'm sorry that is the uh, non-empty property so that is met what about closure under addition well if I took any two polynomials and add them together am I going to get a polynomial I sure am if I take a polynomial and multiply it by a scalar multiple am I still going to have a polynomial I sure am. So therefore, even though, again, we haven't looked at every single one, I could go through every single uh, property and check it. So could I add two polynomials in a different order? Yes, I can. Can I add them grouped differently and still get the same result? Of course I can. What about additive identity? If I took 3 minus 2x plus x squared, And then I added to that negative 3 plus 2x minus x squared. Am I going to get 0? I sure am. So again, you can check each of them, but the ones that you really need to check, the ones that are often uh, going to throw you off, is the non-empty closure and closure. This one's a little bit harder to visualize. Um, but I do want to point out to you that because we're using a Larson text, there's always some great free online resource available to you. So I would suggest that you visit LarsonLinearAlgebra.com um, for a visualization of this exact question. Um, you'll just have to remember that this is section 4.2, and then you can find explanations, videos, and so forth. Um, but let's go ahead and verify that this is a vector space. Uh, first, is zero contained in the vector space? Well, because this is continuous over negative infinity to positive infinity, then yes, we can have zero in the vector space. If I take two real valued continuous functions and add them together, do I get another continuous function? Yes, I do. So it's closed under addition. If I take a real valued continuous function and I multiply it by something, what's going to happen to that? Well, for instance, with the sine wave, which normally looks like this, if you multiply it by a number greater than, uh, greater than one, it's just gonna change the amplitude, so forth. So yes, this is in fact um, a vector space as well. In fact, here is a listing of some important vector spaces. So the set of all real numbers, set of all ordered pairs or ordered n-tuples, continuous functions, uh, continuous functions defined on a closed interval where a does not equal b, the set of all polynomials, the set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n that has to include the zero polynomial, obviously, because if we don't have the zero polynomial, it cannot be a vector space. 
the set of all m by n matrices and the set of all n by n square matrices. So now is about the time you might be asking why do we care about vector spaces? And one answer to that question is that you can prove a theorem for all vector spaces instead of for each individual vector space. So for instance, instead of having to show that these four properties dealing with scalar multiplication are true for polynomials and for R2 and for R3 and for R4 and Rn and continuous functions on an open interval, continuous functions on a closed interval, I can just prove it and it's going to be true for all vector spaces. And so here are four properties of scalar multiplication that are true for all vector spaces. First, if I take the zero, um, zero times a vector, I get the zero vector. If I take C times the zero vector, I get the zero vector. And remember the zero vector for a two by two is just zeros or for a three by three is three zeros and so forth. Um, so for the first one, we're saying we're taking zero as a scalar times some vector. I'm going to end up with the zero vector. And if I take C times the zero vector, so if I take three times the zero vector, I'm still going to get the zero vector. And if I multiply two items and the result is zero, then one of those two items had to be zero. And if I take negative one times a vector, I end up with the negation of that vector. Before we finish up, I would like to do one more practice to show that these are not vector spaces. So you just have to find one axiom for each that's not satisfied. When you are ready, press play to see how you did. So to begin, first we're dealing with Z. This is the integers. So that's positive, negative, whole numbers. I guess I assumed we all knew that, but you know what assuming does. So we're dealing with positive, negative whole numbers. Is zero included in the integers? Yes, it is. So that axiom is met. What about the second axiom that says, if you take two integers and add them together, will you also get an integer every time? So that is met. What about the third axiom? Can I take any integer times the scalar and end up with an integer? Well, if my scalar is a nice whole number, sure, but what if I took two thirds multiplied by one? This is an integer, this is a scalar, that's a real valued scalar. I end up with two thirds, which is not an integer, and therefore it's not closed because it's not closed under scalar multiplication. What about the set of all polynomials of degree two? Now, this is not the same thing as P2. P2 is closed. Uh, it is a vector space. P2 has all polynomials of degree two and one and zero. So this is saying the set of all polynomials of degree two. Now, first, can I have a polynomial of degree two that is the zero polynomial? Sure. I could say this is zero plus zero t plus zero t squared. And that would be in this set. So that one is met. What about if I add two together? Let's say a polynomial of degree two would be, what if I took negative uh, x squared plus x? And then I'm adding to that another, so it's degree two because that's the highest degree. I don't need a constant. What if I added to that x squared plus x plus one? Well, my result would be two x plus one, which is not a polynomial of degree two. This is degree one because those values canceled out. So I don't even have to check the last one. I know that these are not vector spaces because at least one axiom is not met. Coming up next, section 4.3, subspaces of a vector space.